Hey there, friends. Look like we have an F&A Friday. First, go check out my friends On Duty. On Duty CBD. These guys provide legit CBD. Not this Chinese stuff that's going to find you in a wooden box somewhere packed with who knows what from China. This stuff's made in Kentucky. More specifically, the University of Kentucky extracts this CBD oil and packages it for On Duty USA. Check them out. On Duty USA. Use my discount code FTATF. Again, Use my discount code FTATF for 20% off of your orders at On Duty USA. Check them out, OnDutyUSA.com. According to NPR, the longtime leader of what was once the nation's most powerful gun rights group is leaving his post. Wayne LaPierre steps down as he and other former NBA officials stand accused of misappropriating funds from the nonprofit to bankroll opulent lifestyles that included private jets, luxury vacations, and expensive dining. LaPierre has denied those allegations in a New York court. In a statement Friday, NRA President Charles Cotton, I thought the uh, other chick, uh, what was her name? Carolyn Meadows was the president, but never, uh, nevertheless. NRA President Charles Cotton said LaPierre, who was 74, said he is resigning, get this, of health reasons. The gun group said it will continue to defend itself in lawsuit brought by New York State. First thing I have to say about that is the guy's 74 years old. There's a lot of 74 year old people who are still in good enough health to be able to run companies, organizations and things like that. Of course, not all old people can do that. Hence, Joe Biden stumbling, fumbling, bumbling, falling downstairs, falling upstairs. So we know that age can have a play in that. We also know that Wayne LaPierre is going to be tried in a civil suit in New York for corruption starting Monday. Weird coincidence, right? health reasons, right? Is this a pitch to the court system in New York to go a little bit easier on him for health reasons? Possibly. It's obviously a reason for him to say why he's bowing out. Health reasons sounds a lot better than I'm worried that I'm going to go to jail over a corruption issue uh, or get fined and penalized and sued, whatever you want to call it, because this is a civil issue, by the way. So nevertheless, Wayne LaPierre is out. That seems like a beautiful thing to me. And what I said earlier about Carolyn Meadows, if Meadows stays in place, nothing changes. She's cut from the same cloth as LaPierre. They're the elite. They're the big timers. They get all this money coming in from NRA members, and they use it however they see fit. She is in that same vein. There are certain elements that have to change at the NRA, and make no mistake, I'm excited that Wayne LaPierre has finally been pushed out. Now, I say he's been pushed out. Wayne LaPierre has wielded such power and influence over the board members and everybody else at the NRA for so very long, I don't think he's gone. My personal opinion. I don't think he's gone. I believe he is bowing out to take the pressure off of the NRA as an organization during this civil suit. But regardless of the outcome of this civil suit, once it's over, which I believe it's supposed to take up to six weeks, once it is over, I expect to see Wayne LaPierre named as a consultant, some kind of an honorary board member, something to where he still is plugged into this organization and gets to influence and bully people. I also wonder, and this is a wild, le this is just me speculating. Yes, I'm speculating because it ain't going to come out. But a wild left, left curveball or right curveball, whatever you want to call it, this timing also coincides with Epstein's list coming out. Yep, that sounds like kind of crazy. Isn't Wayne LaPierre the kind of person that you would expect to see on Epstein's log? It is, if, if you ask me. So I think there's a whole lot of things going on. Again, the Epstein thing is almost a side joke, but do not be surprised if you find Wayne LaPierre's name on that list. Believe me. So this is a group of people who consider themselves the elite they look at us as white trash idiots that have paid them money to be members. Now, I am, full disclosure, I am a lifetime member. I haven't paid money to the NRA in many years, but I am a life member. I've paid up to a certain point where I had enough of Wayne LaPierre. They call me every year, and every year I tell them, you get Wayne LaPierre out of there or don't ever call me back. And they continue to call me back, but they don't get any money. 
It's going to be interesting to see who they put in there, how they vet them, and is it just the next man up? You know what I mean? Is it the next, is it, is it Wayne LaPierre's homie that they push in there? Uh, again, who they put in next will have massive ripple effects going forward regarding the NRA. Because a lot of the people who continue to support the NRA and believed in the NRA had no problem with Wayne LaPierre. So where is their allegiance going to be now? Do, do you somehow tell them that LaPierre was corrupt and needed to go and that you're going in a different direction and you risk losing some of those people? Or do you try to satisfy the people who are thinking with a much clearer brain and they realize Wayne, Wayne LaPierre was a piece of garbage who was pretty much a high-level elite parasite sucking out all of the life of the NRA, not to mention life, the money as well. So this man had to go. Um, there won't be many people at his funeral when he dies, if you know what I mean. This guy's a piece of trash. People have only coddled up to and, and warmed up to Wayne LaPierre over the years because of his influence being at that level in the NRA. And what's funny is you have the anti-gun movement out there. I haven't seen it yet, but they will very much applaud and actually probably act like they had a hand in Wayne LaPierre standing down because they honestly still believe that the NRA is the most powerful gun lobby out there. Just like I read in the very first line of this article from NPR, the longtime leader of what was once the nation's most powerful gun rights group. Even the liberal run NPR recognizes that the NRA is not the all-powerful NRA that they used to be. A lot of other gun groups, the Giffords group, the Crazy Town for Wacky Women, whatever they call themselves, all of them think the NRA is the tip of the spear. These guys haven't been the tip of the spear in forever. You have the rights of GOA, Gun Owners of America. Uh, that's the tip of the spear. Uh, you have Firearms Policy Coalition. You have a lot of other organizations out there who together collectively make way more ripples in this big pond out there of gun control than the NRA ever did. So the NRA, while we need all of them, including the NRA, I don't want the NRA to go to what go away. All of these organizations need to exist because a single one of them cannot fight the onslaught of gun control that we are seeing these days. So they all need to exist. They just need to exist and do the right thing. The NRA has not pushed for and sided with gun owners in a very long time. They look at things at the very top. The things that are questionable in their eyes, they shy away from. They're not going to put any support behind bump stocks. It took them, if you'll remember, the very last moment when everybody else had put all their chips to the center of the table on the stabilizing brace, that's when the NRA got involved. Remember that. The NRA was not involved and had no interest in being involved in the lawsuits against the ATF until at the very last moment when everybody else had gone all in and the NRA was the single one left out there that had not lifted a finger to fight for your rights and my rights regarding the Second Amendment and stabilizing braces. It took pressure and blowback from everybody else wondering, where are you, NRA? How come everybody else is out here? How come everybody else that claims to be uh, gun rights activists are involved and this one major organization that claims to be a gun rights activist is sitting on the sideline silently, not even verbally supporting what was happening. So they got involved at the last minute to save face, but we all saw the writing on the wall. Now, let's remember this Letitia James who was pushing this lawsuit. It's all political. She actually says that it's not political. It's straight political. She came out to state that after hearing about LaPierre's departure, said, quote, while the end of the Wayne LaPierre era is an important victory in our case, our push for accountability continues. She, of course, is the DA who's pushing this suit through. Now, when you have an organization and people who you have named, and there's three or four other executives at the NRA that they have also named, when you name specific people within an organization that you are going after for corruption, and when they leave that company, why do you still go after the company? She's claiming that there are other people in the organization 
that are carrying the water and doing the same things that LaPierre and his other folks did. So that's why she's going to continue on fighting at the NRA, trying to put them out of business in the state of New York. Not po for political reasons. She's stating it's not political. So she's saying she's looking out for the people of the NRA. This is a Soros-funded person. Remember, this is the same one who's uh, pressing charges against Trump in the case against him in New York. This is a Soros-funded DA who hates the Second Amendment, who hates people who align themselves with the Second Amendment. Yet she's doing this for the people who support the Second Amendment because she's mad at Wayne LaPierre and those mean old white guys for what they did. I also have to wonder if Miss James, if she's this concerned with the mismanagement and the theft, essentially, of dollars of nonprofit groups when her lawsuit against BLM was going to happen, because we already have seen in the news where the leaders of BLM, in some cases, have bought three different homes, totaling hundreds of millions of dollars. That's blatant corruption and blatant theft of nonprofit dollars. So if the shoe is going to fit on the NRA, why isn't she pursuing other groups? And I'm not stating just BLM, but like BLM. Why is she not pursuing any of those? Or maybe she is. <laughs> we know the answer to that. Good riddance, Wayne Lop here. Glad you're going. Just a word of note to the NRA, because we know you guys watch our videos. If you guys intend to operate the same way, and if you don't intend to change any of those critical board members that are making all the wrong decisions and that were homies with Wayne LaPierre, if you don't intend to change any of those executives, if you don't take this opportunity to make wholesale changes within your company, to start to align yourself more with Second Amendment people and what we believe in and what we fight for, you will continue to lose memberships. I think you have lost upwards to $64 million in the last three years. They say that that's for whatever reason. It's the bilking of it by Wayne LaPierre, but it's also, they never want to talk about this, it's that membership taking a nosedive. You guys will continue to see that trend like that. You're getting a chance right now. People are pumping the brakes right now with the way they feel about the NRA because they're waiting on your next move to see what you do. And now is your chance to either send that membership in the opposite direction or continue on that same downward spiral that you've been in for the last several years. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.